PPS, this is poison. PPS, just kidding. PPS. Am I? Though? Am I? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. This Hola. is the book ends. Happy 2023. We're doing a different book this time. This is how you lose the time war. This is by uh, Amal uh, El Motar and Max Gladstone. Well, wait, should we say spoilers now? Spoilers. 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 Full spoilers. The two characters are red and blue, and they're always in a different time period, a different thread. So, like, one time they're in Atlantis, and another time someone might be a lumberjack. So, anyway, <laughs> they're very all over the place. So, there'll be a short section about what that person is doing, and then somehow they find a hidden letter in whatever they're doing. When I say hidden, I mean hidden. You've got to feel the rings of a specific log that you've chopped down, and there's a message in that somehow or something and it's like all in code and they have to be very secretive about the letters they, they have a mission for like their respective side they'll either do it or something will happen and they'll be thwarted most, most of the time, time they get thwarted and it's because the other person has come through and like done something even before they showed up and then they've left their calling card a secret letter secret, secret, secret message and it all has to be very very secret so that their commanders on either side don't know that they're talking with the enemy sounds kind of like an escape room it's, it's a love story <laughs> so how does this book even start are you just dropped in, like, not knowing what the hell's going on? A hundred percent. So they start with Red in some kind of ancient battle, but everyone's dead. And it's like, I guess she killed everyone. Not very clear. But then when she's about to, like, jump to another strand, she finds a letter. She gets this feeling that something's not right, like someone's watching her. And then she finds this letter. And she's like, this isn't supposed to be here. And it says, burn before reading. And she's like, ah, shit. I could either read this because I really want to, which clearly I'm not supposed to. Or I could be, like, good and burn it and then tell my superiors that this was here. But she doesn't. She reads it. It says burn it. before reading it? Yeah. Some because this is a time travel book. Okay. So then at the end of that chapter, she reads the letter. And basically, it's Blue. Blue's basically like, you are my worthy opponent or nemesis or whatever. And, like, I don't really remember the point of the letter. But she was. it was kind of like a taunt. But also, like, a hats off to you for bringing some nuance to the time war. See you around. And then, okay, does it go to Blue next? Is it kind of like a flippity floppity? The next one is Blue's gone to a hospital or something. She's trying to. It was it was something about one of the doctors here needed to live or die. That this is a common theme where like they they're like trying to like save or kill a specific person. That Blue shows up and the hospital is like completely empty. All that's there is the message that Red left because she's already like evacuated the hospital. And this message is this one was really cool. You had to boil the water and then turn the MR on and then read the data from that, which is cool because how MR machine work is that they actually like make a hydrogen atom jump and shift back and it reads those shifts based on what medium it's in and sorry that's like what cool. I, this that's person what I must do. know some stuff i don't 100 percent understand it once you see the mr i don't know how you read a letter from that but okay, yeah so and red... their personalities too are kind of funny in the letters because red she's from the super techie world kind of like robotic in her personality when we first meet her so she's like in her letter how do you even write a letter i've never really communicated with someone in <laughs> <laughs> She's very logical in her writing, and Blue is from the garden, which is this more organic world, and so she's more romantic with her writing, um, more like rosy. What time period is this hospital? They don't always tell you the exact time period, unless they name drop someone, like Genghis Khan. They like have upstream or downstream in the timeline. The different universes or whatever are called strands, so they'll be like, I was on strand 68 downstream, or I jumped upstream to strand 2. 17 or shit like that so it's pretty like arbitrary you know something's happening and it causes the timeline to split but then they also talk about i guess re-threading them back together so they can do things and like bind the threads back together which ultimately has to happen because there's two main ones like two main futures that do exist who do they work so red works for the agency which is sort of this techno futuristic super like totalitarian type of society they're all might be like androids and robots also it was like they can take their consciousness and put it in other things and because of that can like talk telekinetically or whatever but they use mechanical bodies and red reports to commandant who is like the the head of i suppose their time more like military operations blue reports to garden which is this essentially like hive mind situation very very trippy uh imagine colors and lsd and uh, just all kinds of crazy stuff going on but yeah she reports to garden the hive mind who is trying to preserve its existence by fighting against agency so it's machines versus nature blue the one from Garden. You learn this later 
later, but basically when she was young, had to be separated from the hive because she was infected with something. And Garden cut her off because she didn't want her to like infect everyone. And then she like got over it and like was eventually welcomed back in. But because of that, she's like one of their stronger fighters, but she's also more independent in thought. So she like reads and is into culture and history and that kind of stuff, which is like not exactly kosher. The Garden is also totalitarian like as well, controlling and... Yeah. So that's kind of what starts the letters because Blue's just always been a little bit off. I think jumping to the end would help. You notice that they mention things in early letters that happened later in the story. And so like this whole thing's kind of cyclical and it turns out that Red has to kill Blue because they find out about the messages. She sends her a letter that's clearly poisonous in a way to say, don't read the letter. Blue reads it anyways, knowing she's going to die. Then Red freaking out that she killed Blue goes back and like consumes all of their old letters so that she can kind of look like Blue gets into Garden causes the disease that separates Blue from Garden as a youngster and then sets it all in motion hold on a minute is Red Blue? like aren't they the same? they're not the same so I guess we didn't talk about this but at the end of each chapter there's what's called the Seeker comes behind and eats up all of the destroyed evidence of the letters you don't really know what to think about it as you're reading the book but then you realize at the end that that was actually Red coming back and getting all those fragments so that she could internalize some of Blue's personality or makeup or whatever so she could trick Garden and get into the home planet. Red created Blue in a way is what you're saying sort of by... Right, but then Blue kind of created Red because without Blue's letter, Red would have never broken out from the machine. How does it end exactly? I don't remember. They like jumped to their uh, own timeline, I think. Red is being, you know, like questioned and tortured by agents Blue, having survived, comes around and leaves her letter in her, like, prison. And then they both, I guess, escape together at the very end. How does Blue not die? That was part of the sickness. When she went back, was she gave her the resistance to the poison. Oh, yeah, she gave her, like, immunity, sort of, or whatever. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I think she, like, did die, but this is time travel, so things don't have to make sense. So she didn't die the second time. I was like, ultimately, the entire, like, time travel situation is just a motif to help center <laughs> what is a... It's a romance story between Red and Blue. It's an enemies to lovers book. Enemies to lovers. <laughs> they're feeling each other Our out. Favorite. They're taunting each other. Oh, lol, I'm, I'm over here leading, uh, you know, Genghis Khan's armies. And then Blue comes in and is like, oh, well, as it turns out, I was already best friends with Genghis Khan. So all my plans are actually the ones that are in action. And they just like layer on top of each other. They teach each other things from their own particular timelines and cultures. They start a book club in the middle of the book where they start <laughs> like trading re reading recommendations. They learn yeah, to and trust then... each other. At one point, Blue tells Red in the letters like what happened to her when she was younger and she had this paradigm shift or something in her life where she was kind of like looking out at this expanse and Red ends up being in that thread and sees Blue, right? Isn't this what happened? Is it the other way around? I think it's Red that's by herself looking out and Blue ends up seeing Oh, her. yes. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, you're Blue, right. It's Blue the is there around. on like an assassination mission and then doesn't complete it. Yeah, so they start basically like falling in love. At one point, Blue is off on like a really long mission, like a long game mission. And Red is still hopping around doing all these other things for the agency. And Blue ends up getting the advantage and it's like a huge battle win for the garden. And that's when the agency comes in and is like, oh, you guys guys have actually been really close in your timelines like you've been overlapping a lot we need to poison blue because this is like their mvp for the garden and they come up with this plan to do that and then of course like katie said red tries to warn her and tells her not to read the poisonous message but then blue's like if i don't eat it then they're going to question red and red might get tortured and die so for love i need to also eat this message and be poisoned Wait, so almost feels like a romeo and juliet type of story at one point it's got a lot of things going on yeah very star-crossed for yeah. Romeo. romeo and juliet's a good way to put it yeah who specifically goes to a play about romeo and juliet and she's like i don't remember in this strand if, if it's a comedy or a tragedy and it's always fun to be surprised she what's that called when it's foretold <laughs> For, for, for shadowing. For shadowing, thank you. <laughs> you we actually talk get about to... the messages more. The first letter is a letter, but the rest of them are like not obviously letters. The boiled water in the MR machine was weird. The next one was bones that when the wind blew through them played a melody and that was the letter. They had one where they had put knots into cloth that they made into sails. You could like feel the knots. That was a letter. One like Christine said, there was like tree rings. You had to like feel the tree rings. They ever like, just missed these things? So 
they're like, ah, eh, shit, I didn't even see that one. If they like, did, then it's not a chapter. <laughs> if they did, we don't talk about it. Yeah, but towards the end, a lot of them become about eating. So, like, Blue makes seeds that when you eat the seed, like, the letters implanted in your mind. And so there's a lot of those. The one that kills her is, like, a poisonous berry. There was one that was on, okay, like, a I was fish. I thought she was, like, literally oh. eating a piece of paper. Like. I thought the seal was funny, though. They talk about this reference, this old woman's reference on how to write a letter. And it has all these, like, nuances about seals and scents. And so they were talking about seals. And so then she sent her a letter in a seal that she had the club to death. <laughs> wait, wait, what? Like, this was, like, wax seals? But then she just actually used a physical, like, animal seal? Yeah. In this? Blue it has connection to nature. And so, like, the, the tree, you know, obviously spent hundreds of years slowly watering the tree to make the tree rings grow certain sizes. But she'll do other things. She sends, um like, an owl. And it leaves, like, owl pellet. And the message is <laughs> inside the pellets. That's gross. A bumblebee you guys have to just I made a list that. of all of the, the letters. He leaves. That one was he cool. He leaves, yeah. Oh, we didn't talk about Atlantis. They both hate Atlantis. They always have to sink Atlantis because it's too perfect. And they're like, ugh. Why wouldn't they both want Atlantis? I it, Atlantis it, 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 ends up being, be, it ends up being like the idea of Atlantis existing is more important than it existing at that point in time. Yeah, I'm reading some of these notes and I'm like, I don't even remember. Like, bomb dust was one of the letters. A tablet slash DNA. Those seem like very different things. <laughs> tablet like an iPad? <laughs> I don't know. There is the one part where they go into like a future strand, like 8,000. There's a whole religion built around some sort of like iPod or, or like a tablet or something. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. And they keep saying like in the words of the prophet and then they quote some song. They'll be like, as in the words of the prophet, ain't no mountain high enough. I think I got it enough. But we can talk about like our favorite letters, I our guess, maybe letter. or something. Our favorite letter. I was going to say the seal one. We talked about it earlier, but I went back and highlighted and it said, I consulted the literature on on scents and wax seals as you suggested. It's all a bit counterintuitive, this business of communication through base matter. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your waxed seal. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't <laughs> supply any extra scent, but the medium has a savor all to its own. In a later letter, Blue writes back and says, we make so much of our letter craft literal, don't we? Wax seals aside, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so <laughs> that one was so good. That might also be my favorite. I really like the lava pool one. Well, one, I, I just like that chapter in general because there's this like volcanic eruption that's destroying Atlantis. There's like a message in the lava pool. And this is kind of the first time also where Red like really messed messes up her mission because of the relationship that they're forming. She's maybe an instant away from like blocking the whole pool off, but she stops and like reads this message that's written into the lava. I, I guess as a side note, I also enjoyed the little nicknames that they would give each other. It's like, oh, you're Bluebird or Blue Jay and you're Cardinal. Like, I think Red addresses Blue as like, like the hex code for like the color blue. <laughs> that's romantic. I think the tea leaves are my favorite. Blue's favorite place is in London and I guess Red figures this out and in her favorite tea sends her a message, but every time she takes a drink, and looks back in the bottom of her teacup, she sees the tea leaves and it says something else. So I just thought it was really cool that it's like literally with every drink, there's a new message. And then when she finally finishes it all and it's just the dregs, that's the postscript. So it's like, P.S. They get crazy with their postscript too. When Red figures out that's a thing, she's just like, P.S. This is fun. P.P.S. Okay, I'm done now. P.P.P.S. Just kidding. <laughs> P.S. This is poison. P.P.S. Just kidding. P.P.S. Am I? No? Am I? <laughs> <laughs> P.P.P.S. We're still going to win. Okay, can I do a, the recap? Yeah, I am interested in to hear what you say. We went, we went a lot of circles here, so let's see. So we start off here. This red team, a time agent person, has somehow like eviscerated an entire army or whatever on a battlefield. And there's a letter in perfect condition that they pick up and read. And it's from somebody else, some mysterious figure that is from another time or whatever. And it's like their nemesis, this duel of two time agents. Red is from this like machine age super techno centric future blue is from this organic future where everything is sort of one and one consciousness and whatever for some reason they are pitted against each other they report up to these giant super powerful other entities their mission is to kill each other make their timeline win because we can have machines and organic matter in the same future if you just keep extending 
figuring out the timeline. It just can't happen. So they're, you know, traveling through time, jumping around. There's a bunch of weird little messages that they leave for each other and they sort of start to become friends and then a little bit more than friends. Although, you know, they don't ever actually meet. There's sort of these time traveling pen pals. There's different cool little scenarios. There's tea leaves, there's hospitals, there's, I, there's we're all over the place. So I have no idea. But eventually it comes to a point where red has to kill blue. The timeline demands it. And so red has to kill blue with a poison letter. That's not actually a letter. It's some sort of berries because letters aren't literal letters anymore. They're <laughs> just basically magic. Anyways, red does this, kills blue with this poison letter and then freaks out. And so they go back in time. They go back through all these timelines and, you know, redigest all these letters, sort of fix things from the whole beginning and go back to when blue is really young or maybe just initially enters their world and their timeline and they do something to blue that separates them from this giant hive mind consciousness thing in some way so that they can even have this future communication with each other and it turns out that when they did that they gave blue some sort of kind of immunity type thing to this poison that they would have to give them in the future when they had to kill blue and so bam you know it turns out that blue didn't die that time the red team finds out about this and they capture red and torture red blue still can kind of teleport in and leave little notes and clues and eventually ha somehow helps Red escape this. I don't know how that all happens but they escape and bam. I don't know what what happens in the final timeline. I guess they're just two happily separate timelines. It's happily ever after. <laughs> That's about as good as it's gonna get, I think. <laughs> Sounds about right. I actually nailed it. I was just perfect, yeah. <laughs> Bye. 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 Come Bye. back and follow us. Yeah, come watch our BTLs and plot discussions and book summaries. And all the things.